Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over a particular way to retake A through Ticket Booth on Mirage that both Vitality and Heroic use, so let's get started. So here in this round we're going to see Masuda playing towards his Ticket Booth area as they're playing a retake A setup. He's going to be met by a Palace Pop, and his immediate reaction is to always smoke towards spawn. So the smoke actually has a few different functions. So the first one is to ensure that Masuda doesn't die, so it provides some cover. And the second function is to actually discourage the Chiefs from wanting to push into CT spawn, as this retake is only going to work if they maintain CT spawn control. So all Masuda needs to do is just stay alive. So once again, because the T's did a bit of a pop towards the palace area, they still need to manage the angles at both jungle and connector. They still have to throw some utility at it to ensure that they safely cross towards the site. And as well, because Masuda threw a smoke towards CT, this can sometimes act as a bit of a one-way, so you can see that this discourages the T's from really wanting to peek it and wanting to plant right away. So Masuda has bought his team a little bit of time by doing this, and now they've actually arrived at CT spawn. So here we're going to see them set up for the retake. So RPK is going to throw a Molotov towards Firebox. Masuda is going to jump up on top of Ticket just to see if they're going to be planning at default. But what's really going to happen here is that Shox is going to get ready with this flash. And both Masuda and RPK, they're going to get ready to aggress as soon as the T's plant the bomb. This is the particular timing that they're using here. Both Masuda and RPK are going to act as what I like to call aggressors. Both of them are going to push into the site and try to clear as much space as they possibly can. And their goal is, is to kill where the bomb planter would be. So here we're going to see the bomb goes down. Shox is going to throw the flash. RPK and Masuda, they're both going to push out. Masuda is going to swing along the right side. RPK is going to move along the left side. And they're actually able to take down Nico here, who was the bomb planter. So the reason why this works so well is because as the bomb planter, there's only so many places that you can be in. So after you plant the bomb, you can only be in a particular range of areas. And as the CTs, if you push at this particular time, you'll know that the planner has to be in this area. So it'll end up being a very likely kill because you're certain of his position. Whereas everybody else in this retake, you're not entirely certain of where the position will be. And the bomb planner is the most likely person to be out in the open, which is exactly why he's the target for this retake. So they end up getting the kill, they end up getting the trades in the site, and that's exactly how this retake works. So let's look at this from RPK's point of view. So he's going to come in and throw this Molotov towards Firebox. He's going to get ready for this bomb plant as well as Shox's flash. The bomb goes down, the flash comes through, and the RPK is going to swing along this left side area. He's able to find this kill into Nico. And as the aggressor, like I mentioned, you're just trying to clear space as much as possible. So here we're going to see him clear uh, Stun towards that apex area and as well as clear under Balk. And he's going to continue to keep going. So here, even as he rotates towards the sandwich area, he's clearing towards his firebox as well as this palace angle at the same time. And that's really what you want to do as the aggressor. You want to get space for your team in the retake. Next, we're going to see Shox's point of view. So here, we're going to see him throw a nade towards default, and he's going to get ready with that flash that I've been talking about. So as soon as the bomb goes down, he's going to throw that flash. And what Shox is going to do here is what I like to call as the guard. And basically as the guard, you're holding the T's aggression as you go in for the retake. As the aggressors are going to be taking space from the T's, you're making sure that they can't get it back. So what we're going to see here from Shox is that he's just going to hold towards his default area. As this player tries to peek from default to try to regain space, he punishes him. He posts up on ramp just in case RPK doesn't get this kill. Then finally as Kaden gets his kill into Masuda, Shox is going to transfer his angles over just towards his palace area to make sure that this player can't aggress again. And that's really the goal of the guard, is to basically punish the T's if they try to re-aggress. And the situation is different than if you're just holding a site as a CT, because as the T, in a post-plant scenario, you have to actually control the area. There is no more retake, you cannot fall back. So that's why they have to eventually re-aggress if they want to win the round. So let's look at this from Nico's point of view. So he's the bomb player in this scenario, and like I mentioned earlier, with this retake, the timing is very important. So as soon as he finishes playing the bomb, Masuda and RPK, they basically challenge him, and he essentially gets shot in the back. So if you look at Tess's point of view here, he gets Molotov off Firebox, and then here he's going to try to help his teammates take towards this jungle slash connector area. Now as soon as the CT throw this flash, you're going to notice that he's not really ready for this player to be out this wide yet. Look at the crosshair placement that he has, he's basically still looking at Ticket Booth, he's not expecting Masuda to be out this wide, and that's how he ends up getting taken down. So if you look at this from Stan's point of view towards ramp, he's definitely not ready for this at all. You can see that he's still trying to throw a smoke for his teammate at jungle, and he gets taken down by RPK. So the whole goal is, is to strike exactly when the bomb gets planted. It's because at this particular time, the T's are not set up yet. They're not in their post-plant positions yet, so you're going to catch them transitioning if you strike at this time. Here we see another example. So once again, Masuda playing towards his ticket booth area. He's already thrown that smoke in front of him, and the T's are still taking their time using their utility to block off jungle and connector to ensure that they safely cross towards the site. And of course, with that CT spawn smoke, it makes it difficult for them to want to plant right away. 
So right here, Masudo, he's going to hear that the bomb's getting planted. Shox is going to get ready with this flash. And with the timing, once again, you want to strike exactly when the bomb's going to get planted. So Masuda, he's going to assume the role of the aggressor here, and he's going to push immediately after this flash. So the flash comes through. He's going to take down Config, which is the bomb planner. And notice how he goes along this right side here to open up a lane for his guard, which is Zaiwu in this particular case. And because of that, Zaiwu, he's able to find his last two kills onto Obo, as well as Blame F at ramp. If you look at this from Zaiwu's point of view, you can see he does get a kill just before this retake happens. As soon as that flash happens, He's acting as the guard. You can see that he throws a Molotov towards Firebox. He gets that kill into Obo, and he's going to post up on ramp to get that kill into Blame Map. So once again, as the guard, you're not taking away any new space. You're more so just punishing when the T's are going to repeak you. So if we look at Config as the bomb planner, once again, as the bomb planner, he's not expecting that this retake is going to happen so quickly. As you can see, Masuda catches him off guard completely. If you look at this from Obo's point of view. From this firebox area, you're going to see that as soon as this flash comes out, he is actually kind of aware that the CTs could be out already. However, with the peek that he takes, he does end up getting shocks, but he's not able to get more, and that's the whole goal of the guard, is to punish this aggression. And if you look at this from Blame S point of view, you're going to see that as soon as these kills happen, he's in a very difficult spot, where basically, once again, Sai Wu is able to take him down from the CT spawn area. Here we're going to see Heroic do the same thing, but this time they only have two people at spawn. So Stan and Borup, they're both going to do this flash, so it's as soon as this bomb goes down, so the bomb gets planted. Borup, he's going to swing along the right side, being the aggressor. He's looking for the bomb planter, he gets that kill. And Stan, he's first initially acting as the guard, where he's going to spot this player towards his default area. And then now both of the players are going to act as guards, looking for when Mantu is going to re-peak. Unfortunately, Mantu gets that first kill, but Borup, he's still in a good enough spot to be able to clutch this 1v2. And if you look at this once again from Issa's point of view as the bomb planner, again, as soon as the flash comes through, he's just not expecting this retake to happen so quickly. Looking at Mantu's point of view, you're going to see that he also isn't ready for this retake. You can see, look at his crossfire placement right at this moment here. This player is already out towards the left side here. He's not expecting him to be out that quickly. So what if you don't have a flash? So here in this particular round, we're going to see that four people of Heroic, they've actually managed to stack towards the spawn area after they've had a really good read that is going to be A in this round. So here we're going to see that Tessus, he's going to be creeping up, and once again, the trigger point is exactly when the bomb gets planted. So here Tessus, he swings out. As soon as the bomb gets planted, he's able to get that next kill into Masuda, and right here, he is the aggressive role. He's just swinging out, trying to clear as many angles as he possibly can for his teammates. So like I mentioned before, it's the timing of this push that makes this so powerful. You're trying to catch the T's in their transition point. So here you can see that Zai Wu, as he's still falling back to his ramp, he gets swung on by Tessus, and that's exactly because he's not set up yet. So the last thing I want to show is Shox's point of view during this push. So here we're going to see that as soon as this push comes out, you can see that Shox, he's going to peek out and to be able to get these two kills. Now I always mention that as the aggressor, you want to hug this left wall as much as possible, and this is the exact reason why. It's so that this player from Palace, he doesn't have to only peek out this narrow portion here. He has to swing all the way out to be able to kill you, and at that point, your, your guard, which is going to be usually your ticket booth player, will have a chance to be able to trade on you. Alright guys, that's going to be it. If you guys liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And as well, if you guys liked this particular video, this retake format, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.